Tank. Any heavily armored and armored combat vehicle that moves on two endless metal chains called tracks. Tanks are essentially weapons platforms that make the weapons mounted in them more effective by their cross-country mobility and by the protection they provide for their crews. Weapons mounted in tanks have ranged from single rifle caliber machine guns to, in recent years, long-barreled guns of 120 or 125 millimeter caliber. We're going to see in this video about the world's most powerful tank, the M1A2 Abrams, made by America. Let's jump into the main video. America introduced the first M1 Abrams tank in 1980. Then came two more versions, M1A1 and M1A2. Although all the versions look almost the same, there are many technical differences. Each version retains the original design, improving weapons, defenses, and electronics. But today, we'll mainly discuss the latest version of the M1A2 Abrams tank. It is designed to be as low as possible, making it much more formidable on the battlefield. Its length is 32 feet, with 12 feet in height 8 feet. A comparison with an average height person is made for better understanding. This is the main gun. It is the most important device, through which war is conducted against the enemies. Next to it is another small coaxial machine gun. The main body is called the hull, and it is the turret that can rotate 360 degrees and holds other equipment. It can make one complete turn in 9 seconds. It has two smoke grenades on either sides which produce smoke to hide from the enemies. This makes the tank almost impossible to see on the battlefield. Due to its angled size, when the enemy's weapon hits the turret, its direction changes. As a result, the energy generated by the weapon is not completely absorbed by the tank, which is able to protect the tank easily even in dangerous situations. This clever design has been tried throughout the tank. It requires four crew members to operate it, three of them are inside the turret and one at the front. The engine is placed at the rear. We have caterpillar tracks. Wheels run over it, seven wheels are used on both sides. Let's discuss each topic in more detail. Let's start with the main gun first. It is a 120 mm smoothbore cannon. This means the diameter of the bullet is 120 mm or 4.7 inches, which runs towards the enemy from the barrel of the gun. The cannon has a length of 17 feet and weighs about 3,317 kilograms. The bullet fired from it travels towards the enemy at a speed of 5,600 kilometers an hour. Realize how devastating an offensive weapon this is going to be. Basically, three types of bullets are used in this. M1147, M830A1, M829. Each is used for different purposes. For example, the M1147 is usually used to hit heavy objects such as buildings and other structures. Its range is 2 kilometers. The M830A1 pin stabilizer is used to hit a distant object. The range is 3 kilometers, and M829 is used to destroy tanks, armored vehicles, etc. within 2 kilometers. One thing to note here is that each bullet is so powerful that it can easily destroy any vehicle including tanks. Each weighs between 20 to 25 kilograms. The M829 is the smallest bullet of the three, capable of penetrating 21 inches of steel at a distance of 2 kilometers. Can you imagine how powerful is it? That's why the price of each bullet is $1,100 to $1,500. Each bullet has three operational mods, Air Burst, Point Detonate, and Point Detonate Delay. In Air Burst mod, the bullet bursts before it hits the enemy. Point Detonate mod, Burst on Hit. And Point Detonate Delay, Burst after hitting. Bullets are stored behind the turret. However, the main gun has an automatic target system. That is, no matter where the body of the tank goes, the target of the gun can always lock onto the enemy. Therefore, the tank does not have to be fixed in one place to lock the target. can attack accurately while moving. It can even target the enemy and move around in one place and don't miss the target. Next to it is another small coaxial machine gun. The main gun and its targets are the same. After destroying an object by firing from the main gun, this small coaxial machine gun is used to destroy the rest of the object. On top of the turret is another 50 caliber heavy machine gun. It is capable of firing 1,200 to 1,300 rounds per minute. Its effective range is 1.8 kilometers, and it is operated remotely through Commander. 
It is used against enemy troops, light armored vehicles, low flying helicopters, or fighter jets. Now, this is the gunner's primary sight, through which the gunner can see the enemy. The gunner uses three main sights to accurately fire through the main gun, and this includes a night vision thermal imaging system, which detects the temperature of an object and produces images. Because of this, gunners can see the surrounding environment equally in any situation, night or day, and is able to conduct the battle easily. There are two doors on top of the turret, one for the commander and the other for the loader. To the far right of the turret sits the gunner. His job is to fire at the enemy, and that is why he manages the turret and the main gun. Right behind him is the commander. He is in charge of managing the entire tank along with the other three. There are two monitors in front of him, through which he constantly observes everything, including the war situation. The other three are not able to do anything without the commander's permission. Also, the commander remotely operated the 50 caliber heavy machine gun. Loader position to the left of the main gun. His job is to open the door and load the main gun with ammunition. When the turret rotates, these three crew members also rotate with it, because the turret is completely separate from the body of the tank. Its lower part is called the turret basket. The commander can see 360 degrees through the top door. Since the ammunition is stored behind the turret, an extra layer is added on top of the turret. If any enemy ammunition hits the target, it is blown up. This causes the ammunition to explode away from the tank. Thus, the crew members inside survived easily. These are store boxes. Since there is no extra space in the tank, necessary equipment is kept in these boxes. Rare of the tank, it is a network system for outside soldiers to communicate with inside crew members. The driver stays at the front, there is a door that can be opened to go inside. There is not much space here, so the driver has to lie down on the seat. There are two computers in front of the driver and two brake pads below. The tank has a black colored handlebar to accelerate, and when it is rotated like a motorcycle accelerator, the speed of the tank increases. For example, the speed of the tank increases. Again, turning the handlebar in the opposite direction, slow down the speed of the tank. Now the question is, how does the tank turn left and right? To take a right turn, the driver turns the steering wheel to the right, thereby increasing the speed of the left track. As a result, the tank turns to the right. Again, turning the steering to the left increases the speed of the right track with which the tank turns to the left. If ever there is a need to rotate in place, both tracks are rotated in opposite directions through gears and the tank is rotated in place. The driver enters through the front door, but may need access to the turret for various reasons, so there is a small door leading to the turret. There is also a periscope in front of the driver, which allows a view of up to 120 degrees. The entire tank is made up of three layers, heavily reinforced to protect against enemy ammunition. And this is where America has hidden the biggest secret of this tank, which sets it apart from any other tank in the world. And that is depleted uranium. Let's see the details. The first layer is steel. The middle layer is depleted uranium followed by another layer of steel. Depleted uranium is a byproduct of the natural uranium enrichment process. This substance has a very high density, even 68% denser than lead. So it is capable of trapping even high-speed objects. The weight of the tank is 64 tons or 64,000 kilograms due to the construction of such a heavy material. In order to carry such a heavy tank, each wheel in contact with the road is connected by a very strong steel torsion bar. These are caterpillar tracks, sometimes called tread. They're made of steel and changeable rubber. Seven wheels are used on both sides of the tank. In front of everyone is the idle wheel, which has no special function. It is only used to hold the caterpillar in place. And behind all is the drive sprocket. It has many teeth, so that it can turn the caterpillar easily. Only the drive sprocket is driven by the engine, which drives the entire tank. All other wheels spin freely. A much larger surface area is in contact with the ground to share all the weight of the tank. The only reason for using multiple wheels and caterpillars is to move easily over any terrain, including clay. It can even climb very high mountains. Despite its heavy weight, it can reach a top speed of 67 km an hour on road and 40 km an hour on off-road. 
A GT 1500 turbine engine is installed to generate such huge power, which is capable of producing 1500 horsepower. It runs on several types of fuel, but most often runs on jet fuel. It is not a piston engine used in normal cars, instead it is a turbine engine much like a jet engine or an airplane engine. As the turbine rotates at high speed, a lot of heat is generated so two cooling fans are used on either sides of the engine. But one problem with this engine is that it produces a lot of sound. This makes it very difficult to hide from the enemy on the battlefield. So why was it used? The main reason is turbine or jet engines have a very high power to weight ratio. As such, it produces 1,500 horsepower. In contrast, the ideal power to weight ratio of a piston engine is to produce 1 horsepower for every 20 kilograms of weight. Accordingly, the weight of the piston engine to produce 1,500 horsepower will stand at 30,000 kilograms, whereas the weight of this turbine engine is only 1,100 kilograms. That is why smoke grenades is used to hide from the enemy. It has a fuel capacity of 1,900 liters, whereas a normal car has a fuel capacity of only 60 liters. The tank actually needs this amount of fuel. Because on-road with this fuel, the tank can only travel 460 kilometers and off-road 150 to 200 kilometers. There are several armor plates on either sides and that protect the wheels and caterpillars. These are also called side skirts. Each can be opened for better access between the wheels. The M1A2 tanks also has different versions. For example, extra steel curve layers are added on top of the side skirts of many versions, which changes the direction of the enemy's weapons and absorbs most of the weapon's energy before hitting the main body of the tank. Steel pipes are used around the turrets for extra support. There are two lights in front and four hooks. Hope you understand, how does the M1A2 Abrams tank work? If you liked the video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the bell icon.